So today we're going to talk about how SIBO can steal your nutrients. SIBO is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, okay? And basically that is this. Normally your flora, your good friendly bacteria should be in the large intestines right through here. But when it gets into the small intestines, it becomes this. And what happens is when you eat, these microbes start fermenting carbohydrates. They start eating up your nutrients, uh, especially B12, iron, and bile. So bloating, abdominal pain, and gas are just one side effect. But a bigger side effect is the nutritional deficiencies. So when you're deficient in B12, you can have all sorts of things uh, from serious neurological issues, uh, shooting, stabbing pain, to anemia, and the list goes on and on and on. And then iron, anemia, fatigue. And then when you're deficient in bile, you no longer can digest your fats and you can't extract fat-soluble vitamins. So you become deficient in vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K, as well as essential fatty acids. And there's so many symptoms that are associated with those uh, nutrients. So what causes SIBO? Well, it could come from many different things. One being uh, some complication after surgery because they uh, structurally altered your digestive system. And sometimes that physical alteration allows the bacteria to escape going backwards into the small intestine where you have this huge problem. It could also come from not having enough stomach acid. Normally in the stomach, the pH should be between one and three. This is very, very acidic. And one of the big purposes of having a really strong acidic stomach is to kill off microbes. So if you don't have that acid, the microbes that come from the food go into the stomach and invade the small intestine and start to multiply and start living down here. All right, so now what do you do about this condition? Number one, you need to increase the acidity of your stomach. Very, very important. I would start with something called betaine hydrochloride. You can get them in pills. I would take at least five before each meal. I would also take apple cider vinegar as well on a regular basis. You can even get pills that combine apple cider vinegar powder with betaine hydrochloride and take them together. That will start helping this area right here. Number two, you wanna do intermittent fasting. This gives your digestive system a chance to reset and clean out some of the food for the microbes and allow the transit time and the food to kind of get through down into the small intestine through here. Now, one of the things that happens when you do intermittent fasting is you have this kind of this washing effect of the food back into the large intestine, which happened from these little cilia hairs. So you get this cleaning effect if you can do intermittent fasting long enough. Very, very important compared to eat, eating so frequently. If you're not doing intermittent fasting, I believe you can never fully handle uh, this condition. Next thing is to avoid prebiotics, and I'm talking about fiber. Do not consume fiber, and I'm talking about vegetables as well for at least a month to six weeks because guess what? These microbes live on that fiber. They'll ferment the fiber and you'll get gas. And that also goes for probiotics. Don't take probiotics because we're trying to avoid adding more bacteria. You already have too much bacteria and the microbes that are in there don't like to be in there and you have unfriendly ones as well. So this huge competition. And definitely don't consume something that combines both of these, a pre and a probiotic together, that would be like sauerkraut, that would really create a bloating effect. The last thing I would recommend is uh, some type of herbal antibiotic. I mean, you can do oregano, thyme, clove, garlic, and that will create an environment that's very antimicrobial. So that's what you want. So in summary, I wanted to emphasize that this condition is actually way more common than you might think. And number two, one of the big problems with this condition is the nutrition deficiencies that a lot of people don't realize that could be creating symptoms that you're not aware of. So those nutritional deficiencies are not coming because you're not eating certain foods. They're coming because the microbes are actually eating them up and they're not giving them to you. Now, there's a lot more to this condition as far as getting tests to determine if you have it or not. I put some links down below for some additional information. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.